how to pitch your venture asking money for your business is always time consuming often fruitless and inevitably stressful but there are ways to make the process more productive and maybe even a even a little bit enjoyable beginning with how and to whom you make your pitch so to give tips and tricks on how to pitch the venture and get an invest investor convinced i would like to invite mr venu gopal ganpati uh, co-founder and ceo at exilor ventures exilor ventures offer early capital at founder uh, founder friendly terms through uh, our network of investors corporates and partners they make it easy for their portfolio startups to accelerate growth hit product market fit and raise follow on funding quickly making 15 to 20 investments each year till date they have invested in 140 plus startups mr venu gopal was head of strategy and planning at infosys earlier at exil or venu gopal sir uh, helps founders build successful businesses he serves on the boards of several companies and advisory bodies he is an active writer on issues relating to startups without a further ado a very warm welcome to you sir the session is over to you hey yeah uh, thanks uh, thanks folks um very happy to be part of this session i know uh, this is a great initiative uh, that's been launched by artayan um you know we are all not able to uh, meet each other so virtual sessions like this uh, would be quite useful in serving their purpose and making it easy for investors to connect with early stage founders and um, and for early stage founders to stay connected so uh, thanks once again for uh, inviting me to be part of this session right um, i know it's a sunday afternoon uh, it's a post lunch session and uh, you i am he, he just mentioned that this is the eighth lecture or something each lecture is about one hour long followed by q and so um knowing all these limitations uh, i had suggested that i keep my uh, speech uh, short and uh, make it as interactive as possible uh, so that rather than anticipating what you folks may have in mind uh, we will actually take the specific questions that you are looking um for answers and then uh, answer them uh so the way i am looking at using the next uh, 75 to 90 minutes is i'll possibly give start with a quick introduction of myself and axelor uh give a quick context of what we have done over the last 7 uh, years in the early stage ecosystem and then uh, come down to the session um i'll maybe address or uh, speak for 20 25 minutes and then open it out for q and a So just by way of introduction, uh, I'm Ganapati Venu Gopal, co-founder and CEO of Axelor Ventures. Uh, we started Axelor Ventures as an early stage platform about seven years back, way back in November of 2014, to help uh, improve the odds of success of early stage startups. Uh, when we started out, uh, there weren't good accelerator programs in the company. Seed funding capacity was very limited. and there was hardly any market network available for startups that makes it easy for them to access uh, every resource that they would need for their success so that was the vision behind starting axelor over the last 7 years i think we started out with our flagship accelerator program uh, which was rated number 1 for 2 years in a row by investors and founders uh, we have a very active uh, seed funding program and uh, we have been able to build out uh, one of the largest founder communities uh, which has more than 450 founders and uh, do, doing all of this we have had an opportunity to work with about 150 plus startups over the last 6 uh, years so this particular session i think um, you know having worked with 150 startups we have had more than 60 startups that have gone on to raise uh, some kind of funding about uh, 35 of them raised have raised institutional funding which is almost like helping one company a month over the last 5 years raise funding and uh, as a result of all of this uh, we have been able to gather uh, some empirical evidence around what makes it easy or what uh, should successful founders do well uh, to improve their fundraise odds of success which is what i hope to share during this session today now there are different ways to answer this question on how to pitch your venture uh, there is a technical way there is a lot of um, uh, online resources available um, online videos available on how long should your pitch be 
uh, what should each slide say um, um, you know how much time do you do you take to communicate your entire pitch what should be the contents of each slide how do you go about it but in my mind these are all mechanics i think most founders figure out some way or the other to um, get to learn all of this um, i thought rather than focusing on the mechanics and the technicalities of uh, uh, pitching i will focus on uh, the most important challenges that early stage founders face right um and most of you are founders um all of you are engineers um so i i would rather instead of giving a very theoretical framework i thought i will just share with you some two or three hacks uh that i have seen founders um, um kind of crack uh to improve their odds of fundraise success right so before i actually start with it um some question i'm not able to see any of you uh, but just as a thought experiment right um i'm sure most of you are entrepreneurs and who have running businesses right um, i i just want you to um um uh, kind of reflect in your own mind uh, to the next uh, three or four statements uh, that i'm going to say right so when you actually launch a business um how many entrepreneurs here uh, think that uh, customers will walk in or users will come in and start using your product without any marketing or sales right how many of you are not clear of what is the specific problem you are solving for your users and what is your specific product value proposition to your users how many of you are not clear about uh, who your specific ideal customer is how many of you are uh, scared of selling to customers right these are all typically the questions that we 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 start asking early stage founders when we when we interact with them when they come into any of our programs and invariably the answer to all these questions is yes we know who our customers are uh i am not scared of selling to customers um customers will require some kind of awareness building and they, they will need marketing and there is a specific sales effort required to convert them and uh, within my startup here are the three people who are focusing on growth if it is a b2b startup here are the three people who are focused on sales um right so the questions to all these are in the affirmative right otherwise you know the purpose of an enterprise is to create a customer if there is no customer there is no enterprise really but most founders are neither scared of selling nor um uh, nor do they not have answers to these key questions right um so to combine this with the fact that most early stage founders approach fundraise with almost a sense of terror right uh, you know it is not something that they think is core to their business it is something that they think is uh, a chore or a task that they need to complete uh, however much it is important for them to uh, raise funding it is not something that they enjoy from uh, day one right it requires a lot of exhaustion so the the first hack i want to leave behind from a mindset perspective when it comes to pitching your venture is to treat your fundraise as a sales process because at the end of the day uh, that is what it pretty much is as much as you are able to offer your product to a customer and get your customer to write you a check you are making a similar promise to an investor to get them to write a check uh for your company right so the first mental block to overcome when it comes to fundraise which will set you up on a path of um uh you know fundraise success is to actually start believing that fundraise is a sales process right just uh, leave a couple of uh, seconds for this message to register right the reason why i'm saying this is 
when I ask founders when they come into any of my program or they've come into, we have written a seat check and, and they've come into the program and we ask them, right? Um, you know, show me your sales pipeline, show me who your customer is, what does your product do, what is the specific problem that you're solving? There is some form of basic answers. There is an Excel with a pipeline. Uh, they are clear about whom they are going to go after. They have resourced the sales function. Most of the time it is the founders in early stages who have a very clear idea. If you're a consumer product company, you're building out features that will make your product more engaging and build out a virtual uh, growth loop. All this is very clear. But if you were to really treat fundraise as a process, as a sales process, right? The same kind of discipline that you're bringing to your sales process, right? Um, I would like you to ask yourself um, how prepared you are if you are to compare your fundraise process as a sales process with the end customer being an investor whom you have to convert and make it easy for them to write a check in your company's name. Do you really bring in the same kind of discipline that you bring to a sales process? Are you clear about what your promise is? Are you clear about who your investor is? Are you clear about what is the promise uh, that you're making, what their commercial objectives are? Right? Are you even clear about who are the top five people who would be most willing uh, to participate uh, in your company's success? Why do they care? Right. What is it that they need and what is it that your uh, company can solve? If they invest in your company, what will change for them? Right. So because early stage founders approach their fundraise with a sense of uh, uh, you know, not knowing what to do or in many cases with a sense of a terror or some kind of a forced commitment saying that this is some something that I have to get done. The first question I would ask each one of you to reflect on is, are you looking at your fundraise as a sales process? And when you start looking at your fundraise as a sales process, do you have answers to all the questions that you would otherwise have uh, in your typical sales process? And are you confident uh, with all these answers? If, if, if you have made the shift, um, I think, that itself will put you upon a journey of um, you know getting better at uh, fundraise so that's hack number one hack number two is as a result of treating this as a sales process do you need, really know your customers well right a lot of uh, early stage founders when they go about their fundraise right um they're talking to all kinds of investors right angels, angel platforms, seed funds, micro funds, some strategics, uh, VCs, right? They're talking to other founders. And investors come in many forms, right? Like I said, angels, angel platforms, seed funds, micro funds, VCs, right? And each one of these entities um, varies in what they need, how they behave, and uh, how they make their decisions. Their commercial objectives are different. The process that they follow is different. The time taken for communicating their decision is different. The check sizes are different. Um, and their portfolio construct is different. The horizon by which they seek returns is different. How much returns they seek, that is also different. Right? So, when you go about your fundraise on how to pitch a venture, right? There is a lot of tendency among founders to focus on what they have to offer, right? So this hack number two, knowing a customer is, I'm encouraging you to think through this entire process in terms of what the other person would want, what your investor would want. And to that extent, do you really understand, appreciate the difference in whom you're talking to, right? Typically, an angel uh, makes an individual decision or they are part of a small syndicate. They talk to their friends, whosoever, they invest along with each other. In most cases, it is because they understand the space. 
um, and more often than not, it is largely about the excitement that they see in the team. Right? The process is very simple. Uh, the check sizes are not very large, even though now it's common to see angel rounds getting constructed between 250k and 500k US dollars, which will be up to three crores of angel rounds is, is becoming possible. Um, and they make their decisions pretty quickly. Right? As against which, if you're working with angel platforms, uh, you have to make a formal pitch. Uh, they expose you to angels in their uh, syndicator platform. They will seek commitments. That is a time state, time taking process. And once they have their commitment, they identify the lead. The lead is typically the person who's putting uh, his or her neck out and say that I know enough about this business for me to uh, lead this particular investment. Then there are some multiple rounds of diligence before a term sheet comes in. Um, a seed fund and a, a VC fund, you know, maybe it is the analyst who is having the first interaction, then they screen, then you get to meet the partner, pitch in front of IC, it's a long term process. And uh, the check sizes uh, differ, right? So the, the most important thing is knowing what stage you are at. And if you visualize your fundraise as some kind of a fuel uh, that you need for your vehicle, which is your startup, to move from point A to point B and have enough uh, fuel uh, comfortably in the, in the tank for you to go a little further, right? Um, do you have a clear idea of what where you are currently? what is the next funding milestone and in order to get that what is it that you will need sometimes the answer is 250k sometimes the answer is 500k sometimes the answer is 2 million now this number that you have defined as the amount of capital that you need for your next milestone uh, will determine um, what kind of investors you engage with and if you have to really decide uh, what kind of investors you engage with then it is important for you to know their characteristics and it is important for you to activate your network to make sure that you have a first degree of separation or you find a, um, uh, find a uh, referenceable way to reach out to uh, these angels and partners. Right? So knowing your customer, which is what you folks do really well when it comes to sales, I think the same discipline should apply to investors. Please have these answers about what kind of capital your startup will need and hence deciding on whom to pitch in front of uh, to raise whatever capital you have in mind uh, is the second point that will dramatically improve your odds of success because I find that founders are not normally uh, clear about how much do they need and to raise that kind of capital, what kind of time that they should be committing and what is it that they should be doing differently to improve their odds of success in raising that amount of capital in the least amount of time. Right? So this is the second point. Third one is um, something that, that looks obvious uh, but is rarely followed. Is fundraise is one of the founders full-time job, right? I find that a lot of startups, the founders are claiming that they are in the process of fundraising and then you ask them who is leading this process, they look at each other. Both of us are doing that, doesn't work. Um, you know, so how much time are you guys taking out and who is kind of spending uh, time on fundraise process? You know, they say that both of us spend time, we are talking to investors. As and when there is some investor feedback, uh, we respond to it. Right. So in all these cases, uh, the, the fundraise process, which is a time-bound process, and that is how it, is, it should be run, is rarely run in a manner in which one founder is taking the lead on uh, this entire fundraise and uh, running that process. Right. Ideally, it should be the founder CEO, um, but but invariably there has to be one of the founders who's leading this process because fundraise requires that kind of commitment. It requires that kind of um, um, 
feedback internalization, right? For it to be really successful. Rarely have I seen in my last six years of working closely with early stage founders and having seen about 60 to 75 companies successfully fundraise and move on to their subsequent stages. Is there a case where fundraises happened where one of the founders was not full time leading this? Right. There's another important reason why uh, it requires that kind of attention in that uh, most founders approach fundraise as a process uh, which is in which they are seeking a um, binary answer, right? I'm having a conversation with an angel or a seed fund and I want an S from them. Uh, but if that S is not coming through, then I will move to the next person. A good way to look at this process is a process that generates feedback about your narrative, about your storytelling, about your uh, business about the opportunity and see what can you learn from each of these interactions so that your next interactions uh, following the first interaction you have answers for all these questions so if most founders approach uh, fundraise conversation with the investors as a, not a binary one but as something that from which they can learn uh, get feedback and fix whatever feedback they've got before they go in front of the next investor i think it's it's hugely valuable because by the third or the fourth conversation you don't have that many questions for which you don't have answers for for you to build this feedback loop unless there is one founder who's dedicated spending time on this and learning from each one of this conversation and making all these changes as you move along um it's, it's not possible if this process were to be handled by multiple people um, without really any specific responsibility, right? So I think this is what I tell my founders and I'm giving all of you the benefit of the same message, right? While there is there are a lot of ideas around, uh, you know, the technicality of making a pitch, most founders really struggle uh, with how they approach their fundraise and uh, the mindset change that they need to approach this fundraise. I truly believe that if you approach your fundraise with the right mindset, you know enough about your product, you know enough about the problem, you know enough about your users. Communicating that story is not that difficult. And there are three aspects to this mindset change. One, treat your fundraise as a sales process know your customer which in this case the investor quite well and uh, be prepared and align your fundraise strategy to the right kind of investors that you need to speak with to improve your odds of success and third make it one of the founders full-time job unless these three things happen um it's highly unlikely right there are, you know you may come across some serendipitous uh, cases where you know, suddenly out of the blue, some startup has got an inbound interest where the investor is very keen to put in money. Um, you know, that's good to learn as a story or as a headline, uh, but it doesn't happen that frequently. Uh, luck favors the prepared mind. So it is important for you to be ready. It is important for you to be disciplined about this process. I, I truly think that if you fix uh, these three mindset changes, I think you're already on your way to improve your odds of success when it comes to fundraise dramatically. Right. Um, so the, that's uh, pretty much uh, what I had in terms of uh, sharing with you my learnings uh, from seeing uh, founders being successful and what are the patterns that I have seen that uh, makes founders successful with respect to fundraising.